Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. In today's top tip, I'll show you why a variable bench power supply like this is essential when you're building and setting up quads. It'll save you time, money, and make life just so much easier. It doesn't matter if you're building your own quad or setting up a ready-to-fly quad, a super light five-inch racer or a tiny whoop, you'll still need to connect power to your quad. And you can power the flight controller by just plugging in your USB lead, but other than a few configuration settings, you will still need full battery power at some point. And even if your flight controller is wired to power the RC receiver from USB, you'll eventually have to plug a battery in. And as we all know, LiPos are packed with energy and will deliver a lot of current if asked to. And if there's a short circuit or some dodgy electronics in the quad, it will fry things extremely quickly. And that's just money going up in smoke. And that's why you learn pretty quickly to check across the battery terminals for shorts before you connect your battery. Or you could use a smoke stopper to limit the current. This is just a car bulb that's used as a current limiter. It was devised by someone on RC groups about four years ago and I'll leave a link to his excellent article in the description. You just plug it in between the battery and the quad and if there's a short circuit somewhere that tries to draw lots of current out of the battery, the bulb immediately lights and limits the current because it's got a finite resistant. And the bulb lights up and converts all that power into light and heat and not into fried components. It's basically limiting the current to two amps or less, which is enough to power up the quad's electronics and maybe even get the motor spinning at low throttle. And as the inventor says, don't be tempted to buy those smoke stoppers that use a resettable fuse instead of a bulb. They just don't act fast enough to work properly. Now, I don't use a smoke stopper. Instead, I use a bench power supply like this one. Sure, it's more expensive than a smoke stopper, but it does a whole lot more. And while I'm testing things, I'd rather leave these little bombs out of the way. Now, you don't need anything expensive, but you do need a variable power supply that allows you to change the voltage and the current limit. I've had this one for years. It's at 0 to 18 volts and has a maximum of two amps. And this means whatever I do, I can't draw more than two amps and I'm pretty unlikely to fry anything. You'll also need to make up a few useful leads. You'll need a banana plug to XT60, an XT60 to XT30 adapter, just solder a couple together and cover them with heat shrink, and an XT60 to test clip adapter. These are all you need for an easy life, and I'll leave links in the description for all the parts to make these. If you want to power up the quad for the first time, just dial in the battery voltage you're going to use, maybe 14, 15 volts, and then turn the current limit down to about halfway. Connect it up and just hit the switch. The quad's all powered up and ready, but before this, I still do a continuity check with a multimeter before I plug it in for the first time just in case. You can do all your beta flight setup because the RC receiver will be powered up and you can even safely check the motors are turning in the right direction. Still keep the props off though. The other thing you'll need to do is to bind your receiver at some stage. This is a multi-hand fiddle that requires alien fingers because you need to hold the bind button down while applying power. It's really, really fiddly. But now you just connect the quad to the power supply, press the bind button in one hand, and just hit the switch on the power supply. I like to bind my receivers before I mount it in the quad. Just makes it easier. And this is where the test clip adapter comes into play. Make sure the supply is set to five volts. Connect the test clips to the receiver.
and just press and hold the buying button and hit the power switch on the power supply. Job done. And if you're powering up tiny whoops and toothpicks, just make yourself an XT60 to XT30 adapter. No need to buy them ready made, they're just much cheaper to make yourself. My last useful top tip is using the variable power supply to calibrate the battery voltage reading on your Betaflight OSD or the telemetry value displayed on your transmitter and set the low battery warning alarms. Just set the supply to a known voltage and see what the OSD or telemetry values say and adjust it as required. And I've done a couple of other videos on how to do this. And then you can wind the voltage up and down to see exactly when the warning and the critical battery alarms kick in and adjust them to what you want them to be. It's a whole lot better than assuming they're correct and just going to work. And don't forget, the voltage and current displayed on the power supply meters probably won't be 100% accurate. But even a cheap bench power supply will be within a couple of tens of millivolts. And you can always check it with a multimeter. You're going to have to spend about 30 to 40 pounds, and that's around 35 to 40 dollars for something that's suitable. But it'll last for years and will save you money. Just one fried flight controller stack is going to pay for it. And once you've got one, you'll wonder how you ever managed without it. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.